One, what help shall my soul expect from anyone? And warm am I to put my trust as a protector for my cattle, and warm for myself in the vocation, but in the right, and thee, wise Lord, and the best mind. Two, how is he to obtain the cattle which brings prosperity, a wise one? He who desires it together with its pastures. Those who among many that behold the sun live uprightly, according to righteousness. Three, he also, a wise one, shall receive from righteousness the cattle, promised with the dominion and the good mind, who, by the power of his fortune, shall make the neighboring lands prosper for himself, which are still in a wicked one's possession. Four, I will worship you with praise, O wise Lord, together of righteousness, best mind, and the dominion, who desired by the zealous. The prophet may be sure of spiritual aid from his Lord, just as the righteous may count on obtaining the ox, for righteousness commands not only prosperity, the wise Lord identifies himself with it, stands to five, mentions only those two, and has only to make a sign, a sign with his hand, to give beatitude. And this is assured to the prophet. Why? The answer is applied in stanza six, because Zarathustra has a pact with the right, because he is its sworn friend. The Lord will therefore set the good mind, which is, as it were, his providence in motion and his favor. Through it he will send inspiration. He will make known his precepts, so that Zoroaster may repeat them. He is invoked here as the creator of the mind's force, because he has asked for spiritual intervention. It should be noted that each stanza from the sixth to the last mentions the wise lord, the right, and the good mind, and mentions them exclusively. These entities here manifest their mutual relations, and their reciprocal positions change from stanza to stanza, as in a slowly turning rumble. It seems that the successive allusion to these various relations is one of the purposes of these stanzas. The reader must expect some monotony. He should therefore pay attention not so much to the theme as to the variations. In stanza 7, the wise one and the right are invoked together. They dwell, as it were, side by side in heaven. The good mind, who gives strength to the steeds of praise, raises the pill of the prophet up to them to tighten the relation between them and him, and they approach the worshiper. In the stanzas 8 and 9, the movement proceeds from him. The devout poet will come before the wise one, or the right. There's a footnote. One, so for simplicity's sake, I shall, from now on, apply this term, even to the Lord, although it is understood that, strictly speaking, he is apart from the entities, I shall also employ the word triad or trinity to break the monotony. 5. The signs of the hand which shall bring us to bliss are assured to us indeed by you. Wise Lord is righteousness together with a visible manifest help because you look with favor upon your prophet. 6. To me, Zarathustra, the prophet, a sworn friend of righteousness, lifting my voice with veneration, O wise one, may the creator of the mind's force show as good mind his precepts, that they may be the path of my tongue. 7. I will harness for you, O wise one of the righteousness, by the spur of your praise, the swiftest steeds, broad and strong through the good mind, upon which you shall draw near, may you be ready to aid me. 8. With hands outstretched I approach you, O wise one, with the verses which are the song of Zil. You, as righteousness, with the veneration of the zealous one, you, with all the strength of the good mind. In stanzas 8 and 9, the movement proceeds from him. The devout poet will come before the wise one, or the right, for they are one. He will worship with zeal and fervor, but also in stanza 7, the grace of the good mind, who will give vigor to his song. In stanza 9, a new idea appears. 
There are two ways of praising the Lord, by hymns and by deeds. Stanza 10 alters the distinction. This time it is no longer the duality of men acts, which praises the Lord, but the duality acts of men, beauty of nature. By this future actions, as well as by those of the past, Zarathustra will bring himself into unison with the heavens, which declare the glory of God, of which psalmist sings. It is noteworthy as roster to speak of the order of things. As of a cold mechanism, he contemplates it under the impression which these things, precious to the eye, make on him. An impression of beauty, which is also a gift of the good mind, or rather as an act of the good mind. While as a regulated mechanism, they would come within the sphere of the right, the ancient order, but here the right dwells in heaven. In the final stanza, Zarathustra claims the title of praiser of the wise one. He will perform this office. Here, the relations change. While the right will give him power, that is, as a function assigned by the supreme order, the function is thus sublimated and incorporated with the great acts which are in heaven. If I may quote Paul Valery, such is the pact between Zarathustra and the right. Through the good mind, in an inverse sense, the creator will providentially intervene in the world to accomplish its renovation. This is the wish with which the hymn ends. 9. With these hymns I would come before you, O wise one, praising you as righteousness of the deeds of the good mind. When I shall do as I will with my portion of bliss, may I set into motion the hymns of the man of insight. 10. The deeds which I shall do and those which I have done are not and the things which are precious through the eye, through good mind, the light of the sun, the sparkling dawn of the days, all of this is for you, O wise Lord, as righteousness. 11. I will call on myself and be your praiser, O wise one, while I can and may, through righteousness, may the creator of existence further through the good mind and fulfillment of that which is most renewing in accord with the will of its creator.